Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org and in this video we're going to finish setting up the Cisco terminal server we've been working on for the last two videos. The first video is about the physical configuration, about the asynchronous network module, about the octal cables, about connecting them to the console ports. The last video was starting the logical configuration. This is the running config on R3 and I talked about creating the loopback address here and then creating these host statements which you're going to map ports to lines and then connect with the host name. So previous video on that, there's also a, uh, a link at the bottom which shows how you match up these ports with the lines here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the configuration here. This is the only other thing that you have to do to get your terminal server up and running. Like I said in the previous video, I didn't have to make any other changes to my other devices. Okay, so we're just going to go through this here. We're going to look a little bit at what Cisco has. This is just their uh, their example. We'll see maybe a little bit different, but pretty much pretty much the same. So console line, transport preferred Telnet. That's what I have. Basically, we want to make sure that Telnet is able to be used on the console line. So here in the Cisco section they put transport input all. I mean obviously all encompasses Telnet. Good to go. Just make sure Telnet whatever command you use is going to be there. That's it for the console line. Now the line 33 to 64. Uh, remember 32 port asynchronous module 33 to 64 that's 32 ports. Now first thing is we'll just go through mine here so session timeout 15 and uh, in the Cisco section 20 this is 15 minutes if I connect to switch 1 and then I come back to, to R3 or I'm working on other devices I'm working on R6 right if I'm if the session of switch 1 is idle for 15 minutes it disconnects okay so it's gonna disconnect the session after 15 minutes. Now, a little similar but not is the exec timeout. Now, you see it's we have the same configuration here. It's basically a no exec timeout, so I'm not going to get kicked out of privileged exec mode if I'm uh, if I'm connected to that like over if I'm connected to switch 1 over privileged exec, it's not going to time me out and make me log in log in again. That's what that's all about. So, remember the session is the connection to the box okay and that's gonna kick me out if I don't use it for 15 minutes no exec timeout is just means that once you log in as privileged exec you're not gonna get timed out into just the regular one alright now this one's a little complicated uh, complicated so I'm gonna read what Cisco has for this and then I'll give my interpretation so Cisco for no exec says unwanted signals from the attached device do not launch an exec session ensures that the line never becomes unavailable due to a rogue exec process so my interpretation and tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm misinterpreting it is no rogue process is going to be allowed to kick me off of the exec mode on these lines right so that's what that tells me Nobody is going to be able, no process, no malicious script is going to be able to kick me off of these lines, off of these console lines. Okay. Then transport input telnet. Now, you don't see that on the Cisco side, but my experience in my situation here is that I had to put this in so that I could connect. I was getting like connection refused uh, when I didn't have that. So that's my experience. Uh, Cisco doesn't have that. You know, you can try it, see what works for you. And that's it. That's the configuration for these. I mean, it's just, it's just the uh, above section, and it's this. Not too bad. And also, it's pretty simple. Oh, hold on. Let's get back. Okay, it's pretty simple too. Uh, kind of just working with it as well. So you can already see I'm already connected uh, to switch two. So might as well do the show sessions command first. And it shows that I'm connected right now to three, uh, to three of my other devices. Number one is the layer three. Number two is switch one. Number three is switch two. So let's say I wanted to go to switch three, S3. Now, remember, 
these are the host names that you gave them okay so s3 it should be trying on port 2035 so let's see if it does 2035 right there okay and there we go we're there how do we get back control shift 6 and then X and you might have to mash the keys a little bit now let's go to show session one two three four let's say I wanted to go back to layer 3 switch connection number one just hit one that's all I gotta do pretty easy get back show sesh all right and you see where that star that star is the last device that you were using so let's say you wanted to work on the layer 3 or not layer 3 R3 this present router which is also the terminal server okay uh, show run fine all your commands are fine conf t good stuff but if you go back here and you don't have anything it's just it's just blank and you hit enter well, let's just do this show sesh all right connection number one has a star next to it I hit enter it resumes a connection to that device so that's what that star is about that's what you just have to be aware of there is that wherever you're connected to your last connection if you hit enter when you're in privileged exec mode you're gonna go back to that so again connection one Hold on. Okay. Show session. And you see, layer three, connection number one, is still with that star next to it. So let's see, we want to connect to three for the sake of uh, not being too redundant, but just to give another example. Okay, we're back to S2, which is connection three. Let's go back session okay so if I hit enter right now it would take me back to connection number three which is host s2 now say I want to do some work on the router three here and I want to just not get kicked out if I'm just hitting enter here well you just start disconnecting your lines disconnect one show session see that disconnect two there you go so now show session nothing go okay All right and here show session hit enter takes you back so that's what that's all about and uh, you know just so you're aware of it not that you keep thinking you're doing something wrong it's meant to do that uh, meant to be that way so basically to go back and work on your own router just connect your connections or just you know don't I mean you can still do like show run just you can't have it blank but if you want to do it with blank if you want to give yourself more room like that you need to basically disconnect from all of your lines okay and that is about it so after I mesh the keys a million times so basically it's a relatively simple concept you want to use one device to connect and control many devices and that's exactly what we're doing here so there might be more features there might be some things that I'm overlooking there might be uh, some things that maybe I just haven't thought of but for my perspective here it's what I it's doing what I want it to do right I can use R3 and I can connect to all of these guys right that was my requirement that's what I can do I'm happy with that and it's uh, as you see the uh, commands are pretty simple uh, just a couple little caveat things like that right there and uh, you know just something to be aware of I mean if you play around with it for 10 15 20 minutes you'll get the hang of it so it's not really a big deal but uh, it is r relatively simple too so 
relatively simple? Yes. But is it very handy? Yes. Is it very powerful? Yes. Uh, is it very good to know? Yes. So I think it's uh, it's well worth it if you have a you know like a more than a handful of machines to consider doing something like this. Uh, it gives you good experience and it's actually really convenient and helpful for you too. So that's all I had for this video and stay tuned for future videos.